So the solo leveling creators think that manhwa, which are the webtoon space, will overtake the manga industry. And this happened after Pikuma, which is the largest webtoon platform in Japan right now, overtook Kodansha and Shueisha's um, digital apps. So I am a creator in the manga and webtoon space, and I'm going to give my thoughts on whether or not webtoon will actually overtake manga. I'll say this up front, webtoon in Japan is huge. It is like massive. Every company, including all the manga companies, are doing it. So just, just disclaimer there. So the first thing this article says is that webtoon is structured for mobile, manga is structured for print. It's hard to read manga on digital, and so webtoon has an advantage because the future of all reading is going to be digital. Even me, I own a lot of manga, but I haven't read manga digital uh, physically. I will even buy the manga and just read it digitally. I just have it to collect, pretty much. It's like an antique. So I do think webtoon has like an advantage in sort of how accessible it is. Like you can just get one app, you read everything pretty much for free unless you're gonna pay to read it ahead. And you can pretty much just read while you're in a commute. I personally, I do all my reading while I'm on a treadmill. Like I'm just like walking and I'll just be reading webtoons or manga. But I do think that manga is still easy to read on digital. I've been doing it for years. I don't know if this is a massive advantage. I do think that it is more accessible than manga though, which is what gives Webtoon a big advantage. I will say that right now, manga is dominating the print space. Um, I do think print is gonna be less and less relevant as the years go on. We already are seeing the numbers, they're de decreasing in terms of growth compared to the uh, amount of digital sales, you know, proportionally. And that's because with every newer generation, they're reading less books and they're reading more stuff on their iPads. So I do disagree with this article about saying that manga is not easy to read on mobile devices. I've been reading all my manga on mobile devices for years. So, so a lot of animation studios actually in Japan are investing in Webtoon and that's because a lot of Webtoons are really close to being the storyboards for an animation. And so if a webtoon does really well, you can pretty much take those storyboards and use them for your anime. So in terms of what's possible in the medium, I would say that it's not too far off from what's possible in the manga space. I would say that what is lacking in the webtoon and manhwa space is currently like quality storytelling. I think there's really talented artists in the webtoon space. I think there's really talented productions. I think that a lot of the stories are kind of really, really flat, in my opinion. Here's That's my opinion. We haven't had a franchise that's like Naruto One Piece level, and that's because it's a newer medium, again. But in terms of popularity, nothing has hit that level. And in terms of how deep the stories are, nothing is really hitting like the free Ren, uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood level of storytelling yet. There's probably some out there, but none of them are popular enough, so. But again, Webtoon is a newer format, and Japan is starting to move a lot of their manga editors into the Webtoon space, so I do think that there's going to be an increase in the quality coming out of Japan, coming out of Korea. Um, it's going to be pushing the U.S. and international market as well, and we're going to start to see like kind of like an equalization between the manga and Webtoon space in terms of like the quality of storytelling. But right now, it's just not it. A lot of it's just like reincarnation stories. It's kind of like if everything is a K-drama romance, or it's a dungeon fantasy, or a regression story. It's kind of like the isekai stuff that's happening in the anime space, like just... You know, there's a lot of it. There's a lot of it, and none of it's really innovative. This next comment about Manhua's vibrant art style and coloring appeals to more audiences. I do gotta say, color is really nice to see. I think it makes these productions a lot more expensive because you have to color it, you have multiple pe me members of a team that are actually working on a production. When we're working on webtoons, like pretty much our production pipeline is very similar to an animation pipeline, which is kind of insane. But it helps bring a project to life. And I think certain readers have a tough time reading black and white, um, especially in the West. And so they really just like love uh, the webtoon coloring. Though I do think that in the manga space, because it's black and white, you're able to do a lot more like unique things with your line art, right? You can make things like very detailed, like One Punch Man's Yusuke Murata. Like, it would be super hard to achieve this in a webtoon. It would just be super hard. Well, it's, it's hard to do this in manga as well, but it's like pretty much impossible to do this in webtoon. I think there's benefits to manga and webtoon. I don't think one is going to overtake the other. I think they kind of like synergize. People who read manga also read webtoon. It's not like people are only want reading one or the other. They're like the same audience almost. But I do think that webtoon cannot overtake manga until the storytelling improves. And that's what my studio is really focused on pushing, which is just like high quality storytelling that is not conventional in kind of the classic webtoon fantasy sakai space. But yeah, I guess we'll see.